And so he saved it. Oh God, did he save it? But it didn't end there, brothers and sisters. He remembered a note he hadn't picked up. But it wasn't a note, it was in fact a card, which I probably should have known if I actually bothered to watch this video before commenting. Yeah, whatever, right? There are cards in the middle of a church. Perfectly normal occurrence, obviously. It wasn't supernatural in the midst of a, yeah, place that normally rather looks down, that sort of thing, shall we say. It's a polite way of putting it. You know, with the burnings and the witch trials and all. Possibly the best map we've encountered so far. It has bunnies. Which I think, uh, will sit in a great stead. In the competition. <laughs> Crying woman. Slightly random. Including the world's longest transitional cutscene right here. Camera pans with the agonizing slowness of a semi retarded snail. Dear God, please forgive me. I know I'll be put to death for the sins I've committed. And I'll go to my death gladly and with a peaceful heart. Not convincing when you're crying. Please. Just say. Grant me just a small piece of your everlasting mercy. Let me see my child once within your golden gates. Deliver me not to hell. You mean San Francisco? But to purgatory. Allow San Francisco, me to really? For my heaven? Sins there. <laughs> I'll stand within the very flames of redemption. No matter how they burn me. I wonder if this is the actress who actually played Give Dahlia in the movies. Kind of sounds like her. This is supposed to be Dahlia, by the way, in case you hadn't guessed. Murdered daughter. Is that what I thought it was? Also, care for the soul of the girl whose life I have taken. The oh God, I am a child, trembling with fear as I stare at death. Soothe my tortured soul with your. You know, I do kind of wonder, actually, come to think of it. What do you guys reckon? I reckon this sort of confessional sequence here was the inspiration for the remake of Dahlia for the movie? Into a more, you know, sympathetic character. Created as a crazy old bat, she was clearly portrayed as number one. I kind of think it is. And is there going to be still the awkward transition from FMV to in-game engine... In-game rendered thing? Yep, there it is. I'm not going to say a goddamn thing. There's actually no point to it. If you're playing um, like your second or third time round, you can use it to help you get a very specific ending. But as it stands, there really is no point in doing it. You know, unless you're really that eager to soothe a self-confessed murderer. Which I'm not particularly. So if you're going to do something, well, if you're going to kill someone, you must as well own it, as it were. You sit there blubbering like a child and expecting also people to come for you. Not that happening, it's still a heinous act. Regardless of your reasoning. Apparently that's the way back to the amusement park. I thought this was the door to the amusement park, but apparently not. There's also, well, I thought there was supposed to be a couple of goodies hidden around here, but apparently I was wrong about that as well. It should be just the save point. Again, this is probably the part where I suddenly realised in about five minutes' time the reason there's no goodies there is because either I haven't done the event necessary to make them appear, or I don't get them because, you know, Hard mode, so, lol. Hmm. There'll be monsters over there. But actually, that's the way I'll have to go at some point. Hopefully not just yet. And, oh, this is also the map that sort of self-progresses. Yes. Of course, this map just raises umpteen questions. Because more things appear the further you go into the level. Why exactly you couldn't just have a piece of paper and do that anyway in any of the other locations you've been to? Come something of a sticking point for me. Gentlemen. Ladies, whatever. I don't think there's actually any point in that room at all. Other than to freak you out by the fact you're in what looks like a bit of a meeting room. It's like Monsters Anonymous. Like, hello. My name is Johnny Marsh and uh, I like to stab people with my bone arms. Oh dear lord. That man just display oh and another one. Twitching and displaying his crotch. Not we know what to do with this, don't we? That's right. Run away! Run away! Oh, 
my god, what a world! Somebody soaring outside, hopefully that doesn't actually pick up on the microphone, but no, my looking well. There's many things this microphone cuts out with its noise cancelling technology. None of them are noises, of course, but usually somehow deletes entire sections of my voice. So if I don't talk in a very specific pitch and tone, my voice will actually vanish when using the noise cancelling stuff that's supposed to be on this microphone. But stuff like, you know, horrendous soaring noises from outside, that will be picked up with perfect clarity and not diminished in the slightest. Which makes perfect sense, obviously. Anywho. It represents the deity known as the Halo of the Sun. In heraldry, symbolizes a religious group. In video games, a bunch of douchebags. The two outer circles are charity and resurrection. The three inner circles represent past, present, and future. Or roughly translated, all is one and one is all. The circle of power allows you to transmute objects into the, oh sorry, wrong franchise. Usually drawn in red, occasionally drawn in black rather colours, but blue reverses the meaning into a curse on God, is therefore forbidden. Hmm. Hmm. In the molesting. I think there's anything else in this room, though, is there? No. It's all just a useful little bit of insight into the workings of the cult and their various beliefs and such. I think these. Actually, no, these aren't Vincent's room. You find Vincent's room much later. Bullshit! Something that fast does not turn that fast. That fat does not turn that fast, even. If I get the words correct. Do you think I'll be able to do this a lot better considering... Like, so this is post-commentary, I'm not commentating... Concentrating... Fucking hell. On anything else apart from what I'm saying, yeah, I'm still how... I'm still somehow buggering up my words. <laughs> I was making a terrible mess on the floor, yeah? This isn't no carpet. Tiles can be wiped down. That's much better, really. <laughs> Little clue as to where you're supposed to go in case you hadn't figured it out. Or the fact that there's a giant painting that matches nothing else in this room. The girl's cries and footsteps. Actually, I don't know if you can even move it before the weird thing with the crying has actually happened. Hmm. I think you're supposed to run to the end of the corridor, freaked out by the crying but not really noticing much. You go into here, you find some paintings. One of which I think is missing, which is supposed to be... No? Actually, no, they're all there. Huh. I'm sure one was supposed to be missing, that's supposed to be your clue. Apparently not, though. Santa Lisa, mother of God, daughter of God. Yeah, it's all a bit up in the air. That picture, that's me. I'm holding the baby. A baby, yeah, well. And I'm the baby being held. Mind fuck up! As the brain explodes. The me that wanted death disappeared with God 17 years ago. And the me here and now that sought life. It's like brain freeze, but 10 times worse. St. Jennifer, unwavering faith under death's. See, I don't know who the fuck these people are supposed to be. I don't know if perhaps they were supposed to be included in various book tie-ins or like release guide hands out or I don't know. I don't recall them ever being mentioned in anything I've read. It's strange really. But the circle means reincarnation. That's what it said on the paper back there. It's been represented in many different forms throughout this entire game. So death isn't the end. Thanks to reincarnation, I died as lesser, but I'm still living as myself. Some might call that cheating. They considering you retain the memories of both. But you know, just the thought of it is starting to turn my stomach. Ah, turn, because it's a circle. Ah, I see what you did there. Clever pun. Clever pun. Save point. You gotta love a save point. I said the continue function of this game is almost pointless. There's very few things that I think actually warrant a continue save, you know, auto save or temporary save. Most of the time it just spits you back out at the last time you used a save point. In which case you might as well just use the load function. Every time continues are really useful as if you have to restart boss fights. Don't know if you can see it down there, but there are stuff there are. There is stuff crawling in the walls. So it's floor, floor crawling perverts, they reappear very briefly, thankfully. I don't actually know there is one place you do have to we don't have to, where you could end up fighting them. I don't, of course. Yeah. Why would I? 
not worth, especially because everyone else is in the room with them at the time, as I recall. Locked. Now, for some reason, there's a, um, a missionary, you know, the guy with the blade arms, he becomes a regular enemy all of a sudden in this final section of the game. And there's one at the end of the room. For some reason, he completely ignores Heather, and I'm, I'm never certain why. Usually, he should run and attack you the moment he, you know, spots, quote unquote, you. But for some reason, this time he doesn't. He just sort of sits there watching you as I walk into this room. It's weird. Sun tells Agent Guards a study in their entomology and evolution. What a mouthful. Yeah, not really. Pretty pictures, though. There is no religion that has remained unchanged from the moment it was founded. This one is no exception. When this religion fell into the hands of immigrants, it was deeply influenced by their own original Christian beliefs. Like many. For example, the traditional representatives of these primal gods may be given names and descriptions of Christian angels. Thus shared characteristics began to appear. So a lot of stuff that happened with pagan religions as well. You know, Christmas and all the rest of it, adapted from Saturnalia, blah blah blah. <laughs> Uh, there was also one rare example of the chief deity, creator of paradise, or lord of serpents and reeds, being dubbed with a demon's name. Of course, this was done by people who were trying to suppress or demonize the religion, as opposed to the people who were proponents thereof. Again, there are many instances of this happening in real life. That's right, it's Vinny! Same waistcoat. There, there. Disappointing. You show up everywhere, don't you? No, you make me sound like some kind of unwanted pest. Well, who are you anyway? Haven't you realized that yet? I'm one of the antagonists. Yeah, you're on Claudia's side. I told you not to put me in the same category as that madwoman. Well, you're pretty loony yourself. It's true. We believe in the same god. But I'm quite sane. You see, Vincent's he is here, much more interesting than what I tried to do in the movies. So but they made him a teenage love interest. For no is reason. Is that also part of trying to resurrect God? <laughs> It's not uncommon for people to worship the same god and still disagree. <laughs> god? You're saying that you and Claudia like the Protestants and the Catholics? Whichever you like. The point is that now I Actually, I can see that. Vincent's pretty COE. I don't want God to be born. It wouldn't be convenient. <sighs> Much too Unpredictable. You channeling Shatner or something, dear dude? Stop Claudia, is that it? Do your own dirty work. My dirty work? I think we both had our own interests in mind. You hate her too, don't you? Uh, just gotta chime in here. I think if you to actually stop fucking around and pool your resources, the bitch would be dead by now. Powers like you too. Besides, I always hated getting all hot and sweaty. Oh, really? Weird, awkward flirting going on. Doesn't fit the scene. Does it? Huh. Don't stand there looking so smug. You're the worst person in this room. You come here. And enjoy spilling their blood and and listening to them cry out you feel excited when you step on them snuff out their lives are you talking about the monsters monsters oh, they look like monsters to you <gasps> dum 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 <gasps> Don't worry. Oh, what a twist! It's just a joke. <laughs> it 
See, I like this guy. If I was in this situation, I think way, I'd take the chance to fuck with people as well. Did you get the seal of Metatron? Oh, oh, oh. You don't have it? Leonard was carrying it! Thing's bloody heavy too, that's no joke. You mean this thing? Hmm, the oversized candy art, exactly. As long as we have that... when they used to have things like be mine on them. That's what a bit he's cute. Rather than you know, inscribing arcane symbology to banish gods and demons. Seems to touch hardcore really, you know? Not really in touch with the target market. Hey, I got a book out of it, so it's all good. As long as it's not fucking Twilight. If it is Vincent, I'll kill you. Awesome waistcoat or not. Don't need that shit. I've a, oh, good, it's a law book. Excellent. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Same twat soaring outside again. Sheet of paper, nothing important. <gasps> More reading! Get it, get it quick! There's a book on the tarot here. Tarot is based on the 22 Hebrew constants. It's said to represent the entire world. In only 22 parts. So one thought a lot of themselves. Each card numbered 0 through 21 has a particular meaning. By reading these cards, fortune tellers can predict the future. Bullshit! For example, the first card, the magician, signifies creation, wisdom, beginnings, or destruction and fraud. So basically everything you can think of. The second card, the high priestess, denotes intuition, harmony, faith, or dogmatism and arrogance. According to some texts, the Gardner deck had more than 22 cards. The Gardner deck does not exist today. It is mentioned only in literature, along with an obscure figure called the Titmarsh. Hmm. It is said that these extra cards were based on lost Hebrew vowels and denoted otherworldly, transcendental existence, i.e. God. You hope. Certainly not the only deity noted throughout Mythos, so you know. Hoping that it means God is uh, making a lot of assumptions. A lot of pretty bad ones too. Oh, I remember what this is now, this is me debating whether or not to actually heal myself and shit. I think originally I chose not to. Instead I chose to read and then run outside anyway. Which didn't end well. This magic square with strong protective... It's not a square, it's a circle for a start. Bad translation, bad translation. Called the Viren 7 Crest, which sounds like a Gundam. It brings results regardless of whether the target is good or evil. Its strength, therefore, places a very high burden on the caster. It is also difficult to control. It is not usually used. Interesting take on magic, really. That's why it bears the name Metatron, an angel, well, well, from the angel Metatron, or Metroton, also known as an agent of God. Sounds a bit like a transformer. Yes, yeah, this idea that magic that's not aligned doesn't have any support to the caster, unless they bear the entire brunt of the spell. <laughs> oh, this is great. Just got to pause recording my commentary and just go get a cup of tea. Why the hell have I not done this more? It's amazing. It's not kidding by that. What, ten deaths in a row? I was not impressed. I really wasn't. Let's say you're just swear. Oh, fuck. Interesting side note. When you go into your fall animation, the missionaries, at least, seem to lose all interest in you. It's like you don't exist anymore. They stop attacking. So, you know, thanks speaking, if you wanted to get, like, a little bit of breathing room, kind of deal, um, if one was chasing you, doing this little sequence, you could get away with it by just purposely you know, walking towards the edge. I mean, there's obviously ways I could backfire on you pretty horrendous. I mean, um, here's where I forget that I'm wearing the vest and can't run fast enough to avoid that, unfortunately. But yes. Oh, bollocks. Memories of when they did this in Silent Hill 2 coming out, but for some reason, Silent Hill 2 is creepier. Didn't it happen during the prison when things were fairly normalish? When you came across the morgue, or I totally misremembering that. Be surprised if I did. My favorite game of the series, after all. Oh dear. With this rotting stench throughout this place, anyone can guess what's inside. 
I just want to puke if I take a look. You've seen a fair bit of blood and gore already, love. I don't think it'd really bother you all that much to see one more body. <laughs> Shotgun, it's mine! It's mine! You can't have it, it's mine! Of course, at this point in the game, there's literally no real point me hoarding the ammo. When you get to the final boss, again, I'm probably repeating myself horrendously. But again, oh fuck, wall! I'm not sure why I couldn't turn properly there. There's a fair chance I just ran straight into the wall. Yes, we're back into that stage of uh, Silent Hill. The nowhere, as they call it. Ripping off the never ending story. This writing, this is Dad's diary. Why would it be. Well, you need to ask this at this point. I sometimes have see. I sometimes have the sense, even now, that girl is a reincarnation of a lesser. I don't worry about it much now. That's all forgiven. Were, you were unloved, Cheryl. Or was that Alyssa? Now Cheryl is Alyssa again. Hmm. No matter whose reincarnation she may have been, that girl's my most beloved treasure. But that name was a mistake. At the time I thought of her only as a replacement for my lost Cheryl. When she knows the truth, will she feel bad? That's what worries me. Thanks, Dad. So I was a lesser after all. Again, you don't need confirmation at this point, especially not from Harry. But I do have just a trace of one more memory left. I haven't forgotten my sweet and gentle... Really? Really? Didn't, um... Harry's missus die really, really early on in Cheryl's life? Before the events of Silent Hill 1? Because I know damn well certain you're not talking about Dahlia. She was neither sweet nor gentle. Hmm. Weird. Oh, the picture's changed at the bottom. I'd never noticed that before. It probably changed depending on which floor you're in as well. I may not have noticed such an important thing. Oh, pisses a lot of you. Nope, nope, no DP, thank you. Not today. I've gotten this started doing this bullshit towards the end. Just randomly starts chucking extra enemies into the room with you. I think the worst one is one of the rooms back up upstairs somewhere. Not only does it chuck extra enemies into the room with you, it also changes the room to make it harder to see where you're going and what you're doing. Really, really unkind of it when you think about it. That oh, fuck pendulum is exactly what, well, nobody needs at this point. Or any point in the back. It's apparently my past self agrees. He's like, nope, I'm out. I'm check this door. Locked. Well, goddamn. The advantage of going into the area is now it's drawn on the map, so I can plan out exactly where I want to go. Without fear of being horrendously molested by various spiked appendages. Which, uh, Eva's not really into. So I've been told. Never had a chance to ask her personally. I want to run away! Of course I can't see the missionary because it's exactly the same colour as everything else. It would be a pain in the ass normally. They're alone when you can't actually see where you're going. I'm not sure what the orange haze thing is all about. I think it might be sort of a, a mistake being made by increasing the resolution. If you just look at there's not weird orange haze over everything for no apparent reason. I think it's supposed to be there to symbolise the fire that's in the sort of areas a bit further on, kind of deal. Ooh, now this... This room I do need to go for. Again, not perhaps what the point of that room is. I mean, it's a huge open room with only two enemies inside that you can very, very easily negotiate. Oh, fuck. Large patch of white tiles. I move out my portal gun. Fortunately, we have a crying demon child to light the way. Who needs portals? It's thinking with trauma. Is there any other point to this corridor before we open that? I don't think there was. No, oh, it's Vatil, whose name is apparently a mixture of. Oh, what is it? It's Vatel or Valt, which is a French word for seeker or something like such. Seeker or. Yes, I think it's seeker of truth or some such nonsense. And, uh, consonant. 
from Hebrew Yel, which is a common... Ah, oh, I can't forget the bloody word now. Appendage? No. Addendum? No. It's some sort of word. It's something that's usually tacked on the end of a angelic titles, anyway. It's not a real thing, it's just an amalgamation of several different bits and pieces. The Fool's Tarot Card. Oh, and speaking of awkward to pronounce words and other things that make very little sense. I feel like I have to read it, but at the same time I don't... Yes, my voice exactly, Heather. I remember this word being a pain in the ass to pronounce. Yeah. Agalopatis. Agalopatis? Yeah, Agalopatis. Red liquid or crystals resembling blood. According to the Kabbalah, the name is taken from a herb, or an herb, with the power to spell evil spirits. It is said to grow in the Arabian deserts. That's deserts, not deserts, because that would be a whole different thing. The topping that can dispel evil would be impressive, though. It may be vaporized or applied as a poultice to guard against demons. It is powerful, but it is rare. It is extremely difficult to obtain. Is there anything worth obtaining, really? Oh, it's mine! It's mine! You can't have them, they're mine! Again, no real point in me having them. The embossed takes so much fecking damage, we end up mellying her anyway. Regardless of how much ammo you've got. I think, yeah, even when you, you know, don't use up, you know, about the six or seven shots I've used throughout the course of this game, when you've literally got all the ammo you find in the entire game, you're still end up melleeing the goddamn bitch. At least on hard mode, anyway. She was always bored and sad as a kid. Again, you yeah. know, they're just crazy parents. What do you, well, parent, what do you expect? I don't think they ever mention Alessa's dad, do they? I don't think they do. 24 years ago, my Dahlia used me to summon God. God was in my womb, but I couldn't deliver her because I was fucking seven. Yes. <laughs> So then I was shut up here in this hospital room for another seven long years until I reached puberty at 14, where I technically could have birthed the guard, but no one apparently thought about that. God ate away at me from within, driving me mad with suffering. Mm. There I was, wishing I could just die. I like the slow pants going on, I'm not sure why it's happening. I went on living for that nightmare for seven years. Looking at this bed just reminds me of those awful days. I don't want to remember them, because I'm not a lesser anymore. But a lesser is still me. I'm not really trying to deny it or anything, it's just... Uh, 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 uh. Read error. As the brain collapses. And once again. Joking aside, she's handling it a lot better than anyone has any right to. Uh, have I collected all the tarot cards now? No. Oh, I'm not die certain actually. I don't think. I oh, bollocks. I knew a lot I've forgotten about. What am I doing? Why am I getting closer to you? Oh, I said I was trying to see down the end of the corridor, wasn't I? To uh, see if there's any reason to try and get past you, but there isn't. There's no secret opening or anything like that. Bye, fat man. Love you. You guys are entirely pointless. More closers again. Not particularly threatening. Even if you do move slightly faster than your cousins in other areas of the game. Actually, this is probably a good place then to start. Um, what the fuck are you doing, Batil? That's not how you bungee cord. You're doing it. Never mind. Um, I can't remember what I was going to say now, actually. What the fuck was I thinking about? My mind... My mind is blank. God damn. Seriously, what the fuck was I going on about? Or going to go on about, even. Ah, oh, never mind, there's this room. Oh, fair enough. He... Ignores the save point, that's strange. Brass key, yes, yes. Those of you who haven't figured out already, that door we found locked right at the beginning of this entire section, we now have to run all the way back to. 
Not so bad if you, you know, got the ammo to spare, you've been killing the monsters along the way, but as I don't, and I haven't, that means I have to run past everything all over again. Yeah, yeah, it's as uh, good as it sounds. Another note bad. You may remember this room, by the way, from Silent until 1, just before the final boss. See, just beyond this door, I don't know how, but I can sense it. She's not the only one there. I can sense the presence of something extremely dangerous, even sickening, or maybe what they call God. Nevertheless, I will open the door. Enough of this idle chit-chat. You're not talking to anyone, Harry. Oh, fuck it. God, I'm not, but I fully intend to save her. No, them. Last entry was written some 17 years. It's not dated, how can you tell? Looks like Dad wrote this too. Hmm. Nice dress. Ah, the memories. The terrifying, terrifying memories. On the front cover is a picture of Dad. Really awful work. You're critiquing a traumatized seven-year-old. Even if it is yourself, you know, it's kind of bad. I had a dream. In that dream, I opened a door. Fuck, my dreams are boring. That's important, by the way, that apparently random scribbling. That's all part of a puzzle. You know how much puzzles excite me. Five are true, four are lies. There are some fibs mixed in with the truth. See, I don't think that's actually anything to do with anything. Quite honestly, you know, kind of nonsense. Especially this bit at the end about dreams being like lies. And it's not pertinent at all. I don't think there's anything in that entire segment that actually hints towards what you're supposed to do with this door here. Again, it's all based on Santa One. You're once again using tarot cards to open that door. Exactly the same. Essentially, it's exactly the same puzzle that you did when you were Harry. A little bit of backstory here. To record Claudia. Nice mummy, that, yeah. You see, we get, she got the idea for you know, Everlasting Paradise as a kid. Abusive home and all that. There's a little bit of debate, actually. Not debate, but discrepancy, rather, throughout the story. Several times, Alessa slash Heather slash Cheryl will refer to Claudia as um, her sister. And yet, there's, I think there's at least one part of the game that outright states that she is not, in fact, her real sister. She's nothing to do with... I, I don't think she's even anything to do with Dahlia. She's just a girl that was sort of raised in the same house, commune, whatever you want to call it. There's all this stuff here that talks about them playing and whatnot like sisters, which makes what you find out later on even more jarring, really. I think it's a bit of mistranslation and misdirection caused by them attempting to translate uh, Japanese cultural memes without really understanding where they come from, especially when it comes to family. Yes, there's a lot at the chapel altar. The symbol of Samael. It wasn't that one beautiful chapel, it was another altar, somewhere else. Probably the one in Dahlia's house where she tried to burn you alive. Not really tried, she did. Fuck, that was awkward. Anyway, see you next time, folks. <laughs>